Okay, all right. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, it's my actually my first visit to a Scottish university, I'm ashamed to admit, and so I'm uh, delighted to be here, and uh, I certainly feel I've been here virtually uh, many times, and uh, many friends here, and uh, also, importantly, uh, very pleased to be back uh, listening to talks on uh, wheat cleansing, which I have not uh, been paying much attention to uh, of late, so it's... Uh, those of you who feel there's been no progress in the field and you sort of trudging along the same furrows, uh, take it from Rip Van, an anti-Rip Van Winkle. In fact, that there has been. It's, uh, I'm having a hard time catching up and understanding what people are doing. So uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it sounds, looks pretty good. Um, I was told, I, I got in the title of weak lensing and I, I've actually taken a little bit of a liberty, as you see, call it not so weak lensing. I know I'm not supposed to talk about strong lensing, uh, but I'm going to lapse a little. Um, it reminds me of the old Woody Allen quip about um, the lion may uh, lay down with the lamb, but uh, when he does, the lamb doesn't get a lot of sleep. Um, at any rate, so um, what I'm going to talk about is work that actually came out of a collaboration that's been going on, and you've already heard quite a bit about from Sherry Suyu, I think on Monday, uh, on B1608 plus 656. And the, I'm just going to talk about a part of this program, and then try and make the connections to cosmic shear and galaxy galaxy lensing. Um, I was hoping to actually finish this work off the last two weeks, but unfortunately I got sick, so that put pay to that. So. There will be some good intentions here, and this talk will be perhaps a little bit more didactic than I originally intended, and a little uh, light on results. But uh, I think it might be useful still to give some uh, discussion of some aspects of the fundamentals of gravitational lensing. Not the whole thing, but just some parts of it that perhaps have not been covered or have been presumed by earlier speakers. Uh, so, uh, let me just uh, start off here by saying a little bit about, firstly, about cosmic shear, which is, of course, the primary topic of this conference uh, or workshop, and uh, oversimplifying, of course, and everybody here knows that uh, in terms of marketing this, it's, it's, it's primarily a tool to empirically understand the properties of dark energy. It's also, of course, a, te a means of testing the CDM paradigm. Uh, it's not the only one, of course, for both of these, but it nonetheless does uh, a pretty good job. You, you look at it over the scales, typically minutes to degrees, and we've seen plenty of evidence of brilliant data, and burgeoning data sets, and it's only going to get better or worse, depending on your perspective. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's the business about E and B modes, uh, which Nick uh, made uh, a big point about correctly because it provides a very good uh, null, null test that you're, of your systematics. And then one of the exciting developments over the past uh, few, year, few years, so from Richard Massey and... Um, uh, sorry, got a block. Talk here. Tim, thank you. Uh, Tim Schrabach, and, uh, sorry, I just had a block, um, uh, on tomography and down to redshifts, uh, about six redshift bins and so on. This is obviously something that in principle has been possible to actually accomplishing it is a tremendous opportunity. And also, uh, increasingly, once having to face up to the messy baryonic astrophysics, the star formation and the gas cooling and all the rest of it, uh, which will affect, affect these measurements. This is done... Uh, initially, in the context of what has come to be called the standard model of, of cosmology, uh, and for me, at any rate, this is based on general relativity, which we have very good reason to believe in the weak field limit, and it's based on experimental tests, and um, in terms of being a, st a standard model, which is a target to shoot at, it's essentially flat lambda CDM, uh, where the scale factor here will vary um, with the uh, cosmic time tau, uh, and this is, of course, the density parameter, 
uh, just by this very simple formula, given effectively by Lemaitre, but uh, certainly in Bondi's book and earlier references. So th this is kind of special. This is the kinematics. Um, the uh, cosmic shear, of course, doesn't just depend on the kinematics, it also depends on the growth of structure, which is moderated by the rate at which the universe expands. And in some senses, you have two, in principle, separable tests there. The standard model will also, for these purposes, of course, include the CMB fluctuation spectrum, which will be measured uh, even better than it has been by WMAP7. I think we all have... Some people here may actually know, but the rest of us very strongly suspect the Planck data is going to be brilliant when it comes out. And so, again, we'll have an even better defined CMB fluctuation spectrum, and we'll know for sure whether or not it is different from unity. Uh, so, uh, this, you know, is a standard model. This is sort of baseline, and of course, being a target, many, many of us would love to see this... Uh, our four horn pedestal and see new physics emerge, but uh, um, the context in which that's done is that there's been a variety of ways of presenting this. One is a scalar potential, uh, another is an empirical parameter W. It's for some reason it's called an equation of state. I never understood how a parameter can be an equation, but there you are. Um, and then some derivative of that, you could do it that way. I actually quite like the kinematics, which is, you can express it in terms of the jerk or maybe the sprite if you want. Prefer alternative gravity. There are various prescriptions there um, uh, involving these F of R terms and so on, uh, based on some sort of Lagrangian formalism. Again, people haven't done a lot of games. We've heard talks about those, uh, which have been certainly uh, very interesting from uh, Hoover and others. And then the uh, uh, some exotic uh, nonlinear, non Gaussian effects and so on, uh, they are also can be invoked to make this much more complicated. In this talk, I want to just take a, a somewhat simpler view of this. Much of the thrust of this is actually going on to try to measure these quantities. I think at this point there's really no good motivation for any of these theories. General relativity is the singular theory of gravity, and we went through a sort of learning curve about 30 years ago when systematically uh, somewhat contrived but still motivated alternative theories of gravity gradually fell by the wayside and either were wrong or experimentally or ruled, ruled out to the point of almost insignificance. And uh, I would say that if you admit the possibility that Einstein once again got it right when he introduced the cosmological constant in defense of the later history, then uh, a simple lambda is the singular way of doing this. And all this other stuff with quintessence and uh, f of r's and all the rest of it, it may, I'd love it to be true, but the simple, simple theory like that in the spirit of general relativity is just a simple cosmological constant. Theoretical physicists don't like this because they sort of said that can't be, this makes no sense to us. Uh, but that's, you know, I belong to this tribe too, but I, and I think that's our problem. Um, but uh, all the evidence is uh, consistent with the fact that it's simple cosmological constant. So therefore, pragmatically, from an observational or experimental point of view, what one should try to do is say, well, let's take this seriously, just like we do with general relativity. Um, Make predictions, then make the measurements, and see if you can get a significant discrepancy from the prediction of the simple standard model. That's an alternative approach. There's nothing wrong with the other approaches and setting limits on all of this. But that's the one I'm going to follow here, and I think that will happen. And in some sense, that may well be the most convincing demonstration that there's new physics to be seen here than what I've just described. So I'm, so I'm going to take the viewpoint here that this is basically correct, and then, um, then see where we go from that. So we've got a galaxy galaxy lensing. Um, lots of talk yesterday. Great progress there. You measure the uh, tangential distortion by the background galaxies, uh, of the background galaxies, excuse me, by foreground galaxies. And this is now measured in principle out to degree scales. At those scales, one is not measuring the effects of individual galaxies. What one is doing is exploring the two point or more correlation function. And um, 
Uh, but still, signals are there and they should be seen. They're obviously distinguishing different galaxy morphologies and so on. And if I hope I've got this right, um, the profiles are not inconsistent with the NFW profile, uh, which um, on the one hand, uh, well, diver it sort of formally diverges in mass, but is usually truncated at some sort of virial radius, but only diverges logarithmically. Um, does have the property that circular velocities and virial uh, uh, and velocity dispersions should fall with radius um, uh, somewhat, but it's not clear that there's any inconsistency there. So again, there's a sort of sense that things are hanging together here. Uh, there is the um, complication, which was being known about from the start, and it's now um, 